as long as I can remember in the nearly 27 short years of my life, is that there has always been a push to get people excited and ready to look ahead for the next election. I distinctly remember in 2012, the call for an autopsy as to why the Republican Party had lost, that way it can seize the White House in 2016, as well as how to capture the Congress in 2014. In 2014, the first set of elections I ever voted in, many looked to the results of the Senate capture by the GOP and tried to read the electoral tea leaves for the next presidential election. So of course now, in the aftermath of the 2022 midterm elections, the conversation has once again moved towards the 2024 presidential election. You might remember, of course, in 2020, and today in 2022, the weeks it took to cure ballots and to count them, so much so that Maricopa County in Arizona has recently released data to push back against the claim that voters weren't being disenfranchised. However, the publishing of that data will mean little to the voters themselves. As for the party elite, and those that want you to forget the time-honored tradition of American skullduggery, they will use it to get you excited for the next time you partake in the holy sacraments of democracy. In America, our democracy tends to, above all, make one focus on the now. Nostalgia tends to be in the forms of getting people to vote or to cast dispersions on political opponents. Whether calling back to Ronald Reagan or even making America great again, or more recently with politicians comparing our present economic strife to the times of Jimmy Carter in the 1970s. Even George W. Bush invoked the long shadow of Bill Clinton when running against Al Gore in the 2000 election. Yet this nostalgia of political memory is meant to get your mind focusing on the now and the immediate political future limiting your ability to comprehend any long-term time preference. And, as Nick Land points out in The Dark Enlightenment, this is nothing new. Quote, Civilization as a process is indistinguishable from the diminishing time preference or declining concern for the present in comparison to the future. Democracy, which both in theory and evident historical fact accentuates time preference to the point of convulsive feeding frenzy, is thus as close to a precise negation of civilization as anything could be, short of instantaneous social collapse into murderous barbarism or zombie apocalypse, which it eventually leads to. As the democratic virus burns through society, painstakingly accumulated habits and attitudes of forward thinking, prudential, human, and industrial investment are replaced by a sterile, orgiastic consumerism financial incontinence, and a reality television political circus. Tomorrow might belong to the other team, so it's best to eat it all now." End quote. Mass democracy, or liberal democracy, in an age of computer-mediated communication, social media, and decentralized but affiliated networks of personalities and ideologies, works effectively on the ever-growing numbers of franchised individuals to get lost in the minutiae and day-to-day -day theatrics of its modern political system. The procedural kabuki theater of it all is to make you focus on the now. Most, if not all, focus of current political machines is oriented towards the power for the now. After all, the current crop of elites are still mortal. This does not mean, however, that long-term thinking or plans is entirely gone. After all, one of the dominating eschatologies of the left right now, climate change, is a long-term one. However, it is important to note that even calling for action on this alleged apocalyptic issue has seen its own time preferences shrink, just as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and other progressives have note, the time to act is dwindling from decades to years to months. Just as the saying goes, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, it seems right to say, here's the new election, same as the old election. This isn't towards you, dear listener, who I would assume by the nature of hearing this is aware of the ongoing changes and differences in the political structure that you can remember. However, the American electoral structure tells the quote-unquote fringes, especially on the left, to forget about their ideological objections and vote blue no matter who. Of course, their politics as consumer identity is designed to be that way, 
to make them forget that they are mouthpieces for the machinations of the USG, the Democratic Party, and the cult of civilizational suicide known as progressivism. So, as we move towards a desire to eat it all now in the general body politic of friend versus enemy, it comes to an important point of divergence between what fundamentally makes one more inclined to be right-wing, as it were. That is the teleological drive to leave something behind, that our purpose, either as a civilizationally-minded individual or a strict religious adherent, is that our time preferences are a little longer than our opponents. We see this now between those with left-wing and right-wing views. Even I acknowledge what my long-term goal is to be, which is to plant the vine and fig tree that my grandchildren will sit under and not be afraid. That if the world I leave behind is even a modicum better than the one I grew up in, then it would have all been worth it. However, being a writer or any online pundit requires you to be in the same ecosystem that this process takes place in, where one can easily have their mind wiped, or hop onto a fad that once upon a time came and went just a few years prior. Twitter is probably the best example of this, how yesterday's fads and content creator spats online can be rehashed months and years later, and the lessons learned from before all was washed away in the desire to put a few inches on your clout member or just to make that one last response video. In an age where people debate over political models, the cathedral, the octopus, the regime, GNC, GAE, USG, or whatever three-letter acronym you would like to use, it is effective at creating a schizophrenic environment, wherein cultural and political memories are erased through the addictive algorithms of our day-to-day -day life. I use the word amnestics not just in reference to the SCP universe, but because whatever model or word you would like to use for the current project of modernity, it certainly administers drugs and mimetic agents to make us forget about the lessons we had spent years learning previously in the realm of our politics. It ensures that a political ecosystem can return or regress back to a prior, more docile state in the forms of release valves that are built into the superstructure. Will we see a return of 2016-2017 style of online politics, especially in the wave of banned accounts coming back on Twitter, or even Elon Musk tweeting out an Apu Apustasha meme? There is potential, I think, and in what it might be out there for some people to want to return to a style of politics of transgression and flexing power one does not necessarily have, and the name of taking in individuals as allies that may or may not have their best interests at heart. Nostalgia is powerful. And in that regard, it can be an easy target for one to forget the lessons of the past from a simple allure to a time where it felt like one person was winning everything. This is the nature of the democratic machine, to keep you hooked back in, some new candidate, some refurbished idea, or even an old platform revamped just for you personally. The question becomes, can we create an antidote, or at least take some kind of political or mimetic prevagen. Or perhaps we shouldn't become so sucked into the machine itself that we find ourselves losing track of what we were once discussing just a few months ago, or even just a few years ago. An elephant may never forget, but we're certainly not elephants, are we?